Sonny, welcome to Derby. We're here at David Clowes' offices today. He brought you down here for it. Um, I think it's fair to say supporters have been clamouring for you to sign. Have you seen much of that yourself? I have seen a little bit. Um, I've got friends at home that are tagging me uh, in certain social media posts. Um, I don't follow the club yet on, on social media, um, but I will be. And I do look on there now and again, and from what I have seen, you know, the majority of it's um, all positive. Um, so I feel like the fans want me here. I hope that's the case. Um, the manager wants me here, uh, obviously, otherwise he won't have signed me. Um, and I'm just delighted to be here, and um, yeah, I can't wait to get started. What's the process been like for you over these last few months? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a strange one. Um, obviously, I haven't been a, a free agent uh, for a while. Um, I think it's natural when you're a free agent that you have more clubs interested in you, uh, and that has been the case. Uh, but for me, it's, a, it's an important contract uh, at the age that I'm at uh, and the stage that I'm at in my career, so I did take my time with it. Um, I've known for a good few weeks now that, that the manager was interested in me, um, and just sometimes you know, contracts between agents and the club just take a little bit of time, but we're finally in a position now where everything's done, and like I say, I just can't wait to get started. What is it then that's made you feel Derby's the right club for you after having various options? I just feel like it's a really, really good fit for, for both myself and the club. Um, I've spoke to you know James Collins, who I've played with quite a lot, um, and I've also sp spoke with other players like Callum Elder uh, and Nels as well. Um, so I'm well aware that you know the, the lads are great. Uh, I know that already. Uh, obviously a big selling point and it was quite clever from the manager. Uh, we had our first meeting at the training ground. Um, and I walked in and I'd never been to Derby's training ground and I couldn't believe, you know, how, I couldn't believe the facilities, um, you know, amazing. And we get to be there obviously every day. That's, that's massive for a player. And then I've obviously been to the stadium as well. So I know sort of what the stadium was like and what the fans can be like. So um, yeah, ultimately that's, that's what made my decision. Talk to me about that, those conversations with Paul Warren then. Quite a character, isn't he? Yeah, quite a character. Um, and I'm, I feel like I've known him for a long time, and that's actually the first time that we've met properly. We've play, I've played against his teams, uh, and we spoke briefly uh, before, but but never sort of like in depth. And um, yeah, he's a he's a character. He does remind me a little bit of um, sort of Nathan Jones, uh, a little bit. Um, but li I've literally only had a chance to sit down with him like once so far, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to to building a. A relationship with him. I think it's important that the senior members of the squad do have a good relationship with the manager because ultimately it's the senior members of the squad that echo his thoughts and his ideas to the rest of the squad. Um, but yeah, um, interesting character. Uh, seems like a lovely man and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to working with him. Has he sort of made clear his expectations of you as a player and character throughout the season or the next year or two? He has, yeah. Um, I won't say too much, but he, um, he certainly told me what he, he expects of me this season. Uh, for, for myself, I don't think he's asking me to do anything that I can't do. Um, he wants me to be a leader around the dressing room, which I feel like I am naturally. Uh, and then I think when he plays me, um, he just expects me to give 100% and, and let my quality shine through as well. And you know, if I do that, then I'm sure I'll have a, a successful time at the club. You talk about being a leader, how much did your leadership qualities benefit Luton Town last year when you weren't able to play due to injury, but I'm sure you're a massive factor in that dressing room like you want to be at Derby? Yeah, I felt, I felt like I was. Um, you know, even I, I had an injury last season, an unfortunate one, where I was out for a fair few months. Um, but just because you're injured or not in the team, it doesn't mean you can't be a leader, it doesn't mean you can't um, still be a really good presence around the dressing room. Uh, and, I, and I was that, and I've done that for, for many years at the club. Um, we work, you know, fair play to Luton, and we work in a brilliant environment with a great set of lads, which always makes it makes it e easier for the, for the leaders and the senior members of the squad. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that that I bring to the table, uh, and I will from now until till the end of my career. That that comes with me. Um, but yeah, just going back to Luton. Um, yeah, then the leaders in the dressing room certainly helped us get over the line in the end, and. Even when you're not playing, if you can still make that probably one percent difference in any way, like in any which way you can, then you should do it. And, and I did that, and, and hopefully uh, that played a, a bit of a part in in us getting promoted. 
must have been quite hard to say goodbye after such a long period there. Yeah, yeah, definitely it was. Um, I've spoke to the boys individually. Uh, it was pretty difficult to, to write a message uh, to the whole group, which I haven't done yet. Um, you know, even just little things like leaving leaving the group chats and stuff. Um, it'd be a little bit strange for me because I've been involved with that for the past five years. Um, but no, look, I wish them boys like all the best. They, we were just speaking earlier. I think a lot of people write Luton off um, before the season's even started, whether they're in League One, the Championship, or the Premier League. So. Um, for the boys and the manager and his staff, I'm hoping that they surprise a few this season and, and stay in the Premier League. That's another promotion on your CV. Three I make it now. Yeah. What's it take to achieve a promotion? It, it takes a lot. There's not one specific specific thing that I could just say right now and say right that's what it takes. Um, firstly, it takes a good dressing room. You have to be working in a good environment. You have to be honest with each other. Um, if there's any sort of negativity that can spread pretty quickly. So it's important that you don't have that within your dressing room. And then it's just a case of, you know, listening to the manager throughout the week, obviously moving into a game week. It's, it's difficult sometimes to, to execute the manager's plan. Um, but I think it's the job of the senior players sometimes to, to get their messages out and, and sort of get through tough times. And I'm well aware that this league, you know, I haven't been in it for the past four years. Um, and in that time, I know that it's got better um, physically and the players that are in it technically better. So I know it's going to be difficult, but for me, um, the promotions are won when you go away from home on a Tuesday night and it might be the middle of January and you have to dig in and you have to win 1-0. Um, you know, I feel like I'm the sort of character that enjoys them games. I've said it in the past um, on my social media accounts that 1-0 away from home uh, is the best result in football. Um, so I, I'm sure there will be times where we are on top uh, and we can dominate teams. I hope that's the case. But the more important fixtures for me, uh, like I say, the, the difficult games where the, the weather might not be great, you might not be able to implement your style of football, um, but you find a way to win. And, and I think in this division, um, there's a lot of games that I think the majority of games are like that. So if we can win them games and then also um, play the style of football that we'd like to play, and I'm sure by the end of the season we'll be successful. As we've said, supporters have been very keen to see you put to pen to paper here. What should they expect from you when you step out onto the field? And they'll get complete honesty, um, for one. Um, that's, for me, that's a given as a, as a footballer. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think I'd like to think I'm a leader. Uh, like I've just touched on then, you know, in the tough times that might come, we don't know, I won't crumble. Um, I'll be there from start to finish. And, and yeah, look, for, for me, I want them to, you know, picture me um, hopefully lifting a trophy at the end of the season. You know, that's obviously the, the dream and that's the reason I'm here. I'm not, I'm not here to, to mess about. I don't want to be in this division next season. You know, coming into this season now, um, I want to do one season in League One and I want to go up to the Championship. I've made, um, that's quite bold of me saying it and I don't mind, I don't mind saying it. I've made my intentions clear to the manager. Um, I back myself to be uh, a championship centre half. I believe in my ability, and that's not me being arrogant. Uh, I'm just confident in my ability. Um, so my, my mentality is, if I want to be a championship centre half again, you know, there's only one way of doing it now, um, and that's and that's gaining promotion. So, you know, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone that that's my ambition and, and the club's ambition. Um, and if I give 100 percent and the rest of the boys do, with the manager's plan in place, then I don't see why we can't do that. Sure, you're off to Spain on Sunday. How much are you looking forward to getting started? Yeah, I can't wait. I've been I've been training by myself uh, for the past sort of three or four weeks, uh, and it's getting a bit boring now. Um, so yeah, I just can't wait to you know to get in with the boys and um, yeah, start my journey of earning the respect from the boys. You know, that's the, the first thing that I'm thinking is uh, just because I've been in the championship last season and I've been there for a few seasons, I have no right to come into this dressing room and and have any respect off anyone, you know, if, if I'm going to get the respect of the dressing room, I've got to earn it. And that's by what I do in training uh, and it's what I do on a match day. Um, so yeah, we go out to Spain and I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I've, I don't want to call it a holiday and if the gaffer sees that, he might rid me for it. But um, yeah, I've literally just finished my holidays and all of a sudden I'm going back to Spain. So uh, my fiance, um, she, might not be, she might not be too happy about it when she finds out. But, um, 
but yeah, look, it's all part of it. Uh, going away pre-season, I think it's a good time and a good chance for myself and the rest of the new boys to to bond with the rest of the team, and um, you know we'll come back and hopefully we're fitter and stronger. Uh, I understand there's more friendlies to play, and then and then we get into it. You know the real stuff, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Any idea what you're in for? Why you're out there as yet? Not yet, but I have spoke to James Collins, and so far he said um, pre-season is difficult. Um, and, and like he said, I listened to an interview today, you know, all pre-seasons are difficult. Um, I understand that it's going to be hard. Um, but to get fully fit, to get match fit, you have to, you have to push yourself. You have to push yourself through it. Uh, I'm willing to do it and I want, I want to go into this season fully fit. Uh, I want to be strong um, and I want to be available for as many games as possible. So yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to the hard work getting started.